Jai Prabhuji, hello everybody. We are continuing um, our contemplation about the topic of relationships together with Prabhuji in a long article that we are spreading over quite a few classes. Today is still not the last class. Uh, and in today's class, we are going to take another tour into a significant topic, which is the topic of time and of space. In the previous class, we concluded with the understanding that Prabhuji um, revealed in his words that once we are situating in the present, the image on which we spoke is going to evaporate. It disappears in the present. And today we are going to explore what does it really mean to be in the present. What is present? What is here? What is now? Terms that we hear quite a lot in our current era, to be here and now, be at the moment, be present, etc. And uh, with Prabhuji's words today, we are going into an explanation that uh, will take us into an intellectual tour, as often happens with Prabhuji, into the examination of these terms that hopefully will bring us from the intellect into touching their essential meaning, hopefully touching the experience of being in the now, of being here. And this explanation that we hear from Prabhuji, that is this intellectual journey into the terms, is um, an explanation that I have heard from Prabhuji in several occasions regarding the understanding of these terms. Past, future, present, what is time, what is space, what is here, what is now. So let's read. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Natu evaham jatu nasam natuam neme janadi paha natchaiva na bhavish yamaha sarvevayam ataha param. Never was there a time in which I or you or all these kings did not exist. And in the future, none of us will cease to exist. Bhagavad Gita 2.12 Krishna refers both to his own individual existence and that of others in the past and future, without mentioning the present. What we are now is not definable. The here and now are the acid that melts all images. So we are starting this exploration, we can say, with the conclusion that we see revealed in this verse and in Prabhuji's particular explanation about this verse. Prabhuji explains that what Krishna tells us here in this verse when he says, there was never a time that I didn't exist, there was never a time that you didn't exist, and all these kings that you see, Arjuna, there wasn't any time that they didn't exist or that they will not exist in any future. And what Prabhuji brings our attention into this verse, which is not a typical interpretation of this verse, understanding of this verse, is that Krishna does not speak about present. He does not speak about the now. He only speaks about the time. In the time we find the past, in the time we find the future. In the past, we always existed. In the future, we will always exist. However, Prabhuji tells us, Krishna does not mention the now, because in this moment, we do not exist. As we heard in the previous class, when Prabhuji says, the self-image melts when we are present, when we are in this moment. And this will be the conclusion of the intellectual tour that you are going to a find together with Prabhuji in the following words that we are going to read now. Prabhuji will break down what is past and what is future at first. Past and future are concepts that are very uh, used, very familiar. We think a lot of these words, we live this word, and we live in these places, quote unquote. In our mind, big portions of our life, we are actually in the past. 
and big portions of our life, we are actually in the future, right? If we examine our mind all throughout the day, so many moments we thought about what happened yesterday, about our previous relationship, about our previous job maybe, about our childhood, about so many things that happened to us at some point in our time, in our past. We are contemplating about our past. We are thinking about our parents, a lot of uh, moments of the day, maybe they even no longer live, or for sure not with us physically, but they are with us all throughout the day because they are our past. Similarly, a lot of our thought dwells on the future, on what will be, on the next moment, on the next relationship, on the next job, when finally uh, leave this workplace, when we we'll finally move to a new apartment, when we, will, will use, when we will lose weight, when we will change in some way, and what will be in the far future maybe, it can be even future that we will, no longer will be here, but we can travel into the future and we do travel into the future. Again, a lot of a big part in our thinking process. We are going into the future. We are living in the future. We are living in the past and we are living in the future. In our thoughts, through our thinking, not in the actual reality. When many places, Prabhuji reveals to us how there is a distinction between the thoughts and our actually, our actual life our actual experience at the moment. There is some gap, there is some difference. Thinking is not our reality. And this is something that is easy to identify if we are stopping at some moment in whatever we do and pay attention to our mind, we will identify easily this gap. We were somewhere. With our mind, we are going to another reality, to some other situation, to our past, to our future not to the current immediate factual situation. We don't pay attention to our body. We don't pay attention to the person that maybe sits next to us, to the cup of tea in our hand, to so many things that are in the room or wherever we are at. We are not in the moment. We are not in the present. We are somewhere again. And significant part of this somewhere is our past and our future. We are traveling, we are in a way living our reality, our immediate, concrete reality into a different reality. Some illusion that is not the reality, that is not now, that is not here. And Prabhupada breaks down this past and future and shows to us in this expression that you are going to read now, this uh, intellectual analysis, that our past can be a second ago, and it can be ironed backward. The point is that it was past is very easy concept. It's easy to understand. It is clear to all of us what do we mean when we say past. We all understand what is past and we can explain whatever was and is no longer. It's not here. It's not at the moment. It is our past. Similarly, Prabhuji shows us this future we can break down to the next second or maybe to our own ions forward. The principle is similar. It will be. It is not now. And therefore, we categorize it very easily without much effort into this term or category that we call future. Whatever will be is future. Babuji says it is pure future. If we can identify it as future, we can say this is pure future. What happens to us with this analysis is that when we are trying to find the present in the same way that we found the past, in the same way that we found the future, we are unable. We said the past we can identify and we can explain. It was the future we can identify and we can explain, we can understand, we can comprehend. The present, not so easy, we don't find. We can say the present is not the past and not the future. This is not the definition. What is it? It is between past and future. What is it? Where is it? 
Show us the, we want to see the present. We want to understand the present. Prabhuji tells us it is impossible. We cannot identify the present. We can say today is the present. Well, now it's 5 p.m. Until 5 p.m., this is pure past. 501 will be pure future. We are left with one minute out of this present. We can say this minute is present, but if we are on the treadmill, we can know very easily a minute is not present. It consists of seconds. Part of them are past. Other parts of them can be future, depending where are we at this minute exactly. But this is not present. It's a unit of time that has a range. That this range, Prabhuji tells us, can be broken down into past and future. We want to find the present. But if we understand this principle that every unit of time, which is what Prabhuji beautifully shows us in this explanation, can be broken down to past and future, whatever has a range, whatever can be measured, whatever can be identified, we can break it down to past or future, we will see that we are left with no present. We cannot identify the present. The past has range. It has volume. We can picture the past. Similarly, the future. We can identify the future. We can understand what do we mean by future and picture this future, break it down. Again, it's substantial in our thoughts. The present, we cannot picture, we cannot grasp, we cannot touch. So where is this present? So let's follow along with Prabhuji's words in search for this present. What is this present? We find, again, that the past and the future are easy concepts. The present is not the same case. This is an enigmatic term that requires much more thought and contemplation to try and penetrate into the understanding of what does it mean the present time. When we talk about the present moment, we think it is a unit of time related to the past and future. However, if we think about it more carefully, we will see that what we call now is not really clear to us. We perceive the now as a transition from the past to the future. But how can we define the present itself without relating it to yesterday and tomorrow? For example, if we take the present as a unit of time, we can refer to the current year. If it is March, then January and February are past, despite being within the current year, and the upcoming months are in the future. Therefore, a shorter period of time is needed in order to define the present. Let us take the current months. But within the current months, some days belong to the past and others to the future. Then let us take a day. If we refer to a day as a present time unit, we will see that the same thing happens with hours. Then let us take an hour, but the same happens with minutes. If we take a minute as the present, we will see that it comprises some seconds in the past and others in the future. The same thing occurs with a second and so on. We enter into an infinite regression. We can call a time unit pure past or pure future. For instance, last year belongs wholly to the past, next year to the future. But what can we call pure present? Any unit we choose as present can be divided. It seems that there is no such unit of time that is completely devoid of past or future and may be called now. So what Prabhuji actually shows us here is that this present can never be found, can never be explained, can never be identified. We cannot point to the present. However, we can be at the present. And Prabhuji explained to us the reason for it is that the present is not found in the line of the time. That the present is not time, different than the past and the future. The present is in fact a state of being. We can live life in the present. And this present, Prabhuji explains to us, is in fact awareness, is in fact consciousness. Again, what defines this present 
is our state. We can be in the present, not explain, not understand, not perceive, only be. Let's read. If we seek the present as a time unit devoid of past and future, we will reach a dimensionless unit of time. And now that could be subdivided into past and future would not be pure present. That is, the present time is a time that cannot be subdivided. We may think that nothing can exist without time. However, within the indivisible moment, we find the one consciousness that transcends time and space. The present is awareness, and being completely aware implies situating ourselves in the now. So Prabhuji tells us again, this present is found outside of the time. This present cannot be divided. It is not time. It is not tangible. It is not conceptual. We can only disappear into the present in a way. Live in the present. This present, Prabhuji tells us, is a dimensionless state. It's a state that is not a dimension and it has no dimension. And this is why we cannot understand it or explain it or define it, but yet we can be it. We can think that if there is no time, nothing can exist outside of the time. Everything that we know of must be in the line of time. It was somewhere, it will be some at some point. Prabhuji tells us, not at all is this is the case. The opposite, outside of time, is where life really exists, is where we can find the one consciousness that transcends the time and transcends the space. Only there, in a way, Prabhuji tells us, we can exist outside the line of time. Within the line of time, in the past and in the future, we don't really exist, as we analyzed previously. There are illusions, there are thoughts. We are not in the past, never. We are never in the future. In the present, where we are managing to situate ourselves outside of the time, this is the only reality that we can really exist in. And if we ask now, so, okay, we understood that the present is a state of being that it is not past and it is not future, that it is not time. We understand that it's a beautiful state. We might even remember moments that we felt that time stopped, right? We even use this term when we hear or read in a book that the time stopped. We all understand really what it means. We all understand that we speak here about moments of really experiencing life either moments of fear, moments of joy, life was intense, life was significant, and this is why we identify that time stopped, everything was alive, we existed, we were aware of everything. But we may ask ourselves, so how can we situate ourselves in this beautiful situation that time stops, that we are outside of this line of time, that we are in this consciousness that Prabhuji speaks about, that is a dimensionless state, right? We want to be in this state. And we often can find ourselves not able to cross this door, this line, from the thinking into living, into being, into meditating, into being aware and ask, so how do we shift? How do we situate ourselves in this state of here and now that we heard before, that we hear about it? And even though we hear often from Prabhuji that there is no method, that there is no solution to these desires of ours, still Prabhuji gives us here a key for this door. How can we really move? How can we really open this door? And the key that Prabhuji gives us is attention. 
Attention is only possible in the present. We cannot be attentive to the past or future because they are made of memories and imaginations which lack consciousness. When we reach the indivisible unit, we will rest in consciousness. The essential nature of the present is awareness. To live in the present is to be aware. So Prabhuji tells us, if we want to situate ourselves in our current immediate situation, in our reality, in our experience in the very moment, attention is the key. When we lack attention of what, going, of what is going on, of ourselves, of our experiences, we are disconnecting from the reality. And by being attentive, paying attention, we are coming back in a way to our very experience, to our reality at the moment. In Hatha Yoga, we are familiar with this uh, method in which we pay attention to our body, to the movements, to the touch, to every breath, to every sensation. And we know that this method, this path of Hatha Yoga, is not aimed in doing sophisticated exercises or in losing weight or in uh, all kind of uh, other objectives that we can have when practicing physical exercises. But its essence is to help us situate ourselves in the moment, as any other place of yoga, of being aware, of being in this consciousness that Prabhuji talks about that is transcendental to the time, transcendental to the place. And as we promise, similarly, Prabhuji is going to um, analyze the terms of space of here that will bring us to the same conclusion and to the same place and state that we reached with this exploration into the term of the time and of the present. So similarly with space, we can ask what is here? We want to be here. What is to be here? And if we analyze this term, Prabhuji does not break it down exactly in the same way that he did with the term time, but we can do it ourselves and ask ourselves, so what is here? Is the planet is here? The country? The state? The city? Street? House? Our room? Our bed? The chair that we sit on? The bed that we sit on? Is this here? If we move the little, are we no longer here? Now we are there? Can we be there? Were we ever there? We can never be there. We are always here. So we see that also here is not a place. Here is a state, Prabhuji tells us. If we will close our eyes and somebody is going to take us into a surprise party maybe and we don't know where we are, what we know for sure with closed eyes, we are here. At every second of our life, we were here, we are here, we will be here. We are always here. And Prabhuji gives the example of a jar. That if we take a jar and we think that this space that inside this jar is moving together with the jar, right? We have here space. Of course, it's moving together with the jar from place to place at first glance. But if we look deeper, we can easily understand and witness that the space inside is exactly like the space outside. The same emptiness. Really, this emptiness is all pervading and it's not moving anywhere. The jar stays in the same space all the time. Similarly, Prabhuji tells us, we are in this here, in this dimensionless state, this in essence, in fact, is not another term different than now, but it's exactly the same term. It has exactly the same meaning. Two different words that say the same thing. Both speak about the same state. Not two different states. So when we explore this 
term of time we can get into the present and from the present reach this state of being that is now similarly when we examine this space different places we can reach to the understanding of the here and find this again dimensionless state and ultimately Prabhuji tells us they are just the same state in other words now and here mean the same thing and both means consciousness awareness this dimensionless state that is outside of time that is outside of place when we are existing in essence when we are we can say not existing as body not existing as a name not existing as a self-image but really living directly this is this dimensionless state where the here and the now meet again Just as with the now, the place that we call here can be divided infinitely. Both are dimensionless. In the same way that searching for the now shows us that the present is not a unit of time, searching for the here makes us aware that every there is illusory. For example, when we move an empty jar, it seems that the space contained inside it moves too. But the inner space is not different from the outer one. That emptiness within the jar is its oceanic aspect which we all have. Within our physical, mental and emotional periphery, we have a here that constitutes the center of our existence. The here and the now are other terms for referring to consciousness. So in this, we uh, concluded this journey into this topic of time and space that is, of course, very connected to our entire context of the self-image and of the uh, exploration into the uh, question regarding our relationships with each other. And in the next slide, we are going to uh, connect this understanding into the end of the article and hopefully tie everything together and uh, get some essential understanding that Prabhuji reveals in this article relating to our relationships with each other that is so connected to our ability to live at the present moment, to live in our current situation and to really interact with each other here and now, which Prabhuji, of course, tells us only there we can really interact, we can really be, we can really respond, not out of our self-images, but outside of our self-images, outside of the time, outside of the place. Thank you for joining. Jai Prabhuji.